Gareth, it's that strange time of year now that the games have dried up. Um, fans are probably thinking how they're going to occupy their Saturdays. I know you're hard at work and, and at the moment we're reflecting on those that have left the club, um, particularly four big names that, that really featured in that Wembley player final for the side, part of a, a historic squad here. Um, and, and, and starting, I suppose, in goal with Ryan Allsop and, and Cameron Yates both leaving the club. Uh, two great servants for you. Yeah, uh, um, you know, it's a difficult time of year. Like you said all the time, we're, we're still in. We're, we're in today. Um, yeah, you know, I've got a recruitment drive. Uh, some of the players, the injured players, who have been injured this season, and, and it's great to see some faces. But uh, obviously, some of the faces we won't be seeing is uh, is the, the the players you've mentioned. You know, um, first of all, the two keepers. You know, um, I start with Cameron, who, who I thought has been he's he's really handled himself well here. You know, he always came in as that number two, trying to fight for his place, and almost got a long move last season somewhere but um, picked up a, just a tiny injury just before the move and, and that scuppered him had a, and then had a wrist injury which again didn't, didn't really do him any favours when Lee came in Lee didn't get to see him so um, we thought it was good for Cameron to, uh, to go and play he needs to go and play games and, uh, and he wasn't playing enough games here and, uh, and Cameron agreed and it's great you know and, uh, when they realised that um, what they've learnt at Wickham as a person we've seen developed he, he was a big reason we got promoted as well because of his vocal support I think everyone knows Cameron Yates' voice now in the, in the crowd and massive thank you to him um, hopefully he goes on to, to, to be a number one somewhere um, and speaking of number ones obviously Ryan Alsop you know um, fantastic servant again um, he's uh, he's made some phenomenal saves for me um, and, and obviously the, the the spells he's had here first the long spell when he came in he's done brilliant for us and then and went on loan various other places whoever gets Ryan will have a great keeper you know um, he's a he's a top notch guy um, and some of the saves in the championship this year were phenomenal you know probably a victim of uh, getting a, a, a knock and then David Stockdale coming in and, and really performing and claiming that jersey you know and uh, and you know next season um, probably going back a little bit to a strategy I've used before um, so so David's coming in as number one you know and I'm, I'm pleased with that and I think uh, I think he's uh, it was a tough choice believe me but um, I think Ryan uh, certainly turned up somewhere and, uh, and like I say someone's got a fantastic keeper but can't thank him enough for his efforts uh, great guy and, and yeah we'll, we'll miss him so uh, yeah the two two, uh, two two good keepers who uh, hopefully will end up playing and we'll see him uh, with the Wickham thoughts in our mind There'll be some players who spend many more than three years at the club and, and make more appearances than Darius did, but not many will leave quite mm. the legacy that he has on and off the pitch. Um, I know it's, it's hard to, to see someone like that leave in, in a playing capacity. Uh, Darius and Giles Phillips, both two defenders moving this summer. Yeah, Darius, I mean, um, epitomises what we are here, you know, and, and really, um, I remember him making that decision, sat in this office uh, in tears and, and choking me up because of... Uh, his injury um, and saying at the end of that first season, Gaffer, I, I, I feel guilty, I've, I've taken my wage, I haven't performed, I've been injured, I want to do this, I'm feeling like I'm just coming out of the woods at the wrong time. Um, and, and credit to my medical team as well, you know, Key and Isaac, Ali, they really work hard with the players and I think testament to them. Um, getting Darius playing that full season we did in League One to, to get promoted. Um, he, he was phenomenal that year, absolutely phenomenal. It was almost uh, perfect for him because um, really put himself on the map. That's what he could do. Um, he was doing it for years and, and this injury obviously is going to stop him full-time training and full-time playing and that's the reason Darius uh, has moved on. But nobody will nobody will forget what Darius Charles did for this club, you know, and the real leader for us and, uh, and um, like I say, <laughs> I can't, words can't do him justice. You need to speak to the guy because uh, he's such an awesome fella. But um, he'll he'll end up uh, somewhere, um, and the door isn't closed at Wickham either. You know, for somebody like Darius, you know, he's, he's coming to the end, probably thinking about hanging the boots up. Um, maybe there's some role we could do at Wickham. Um, but um, and we've talked about that behind the scenes. But but again, you know, things have to fit and, and things have to be right. Um, because he may fancy still playing. This is obviously semi-pro and. But um, the door will always be open, I'm sure, here. And, uh, and yeah, what, what a great guy. Um, and underneath him there, learning off him was Giles Phillips, you know. And again, uh, totally bought into the Wickham way. Um, played, played a good part in, uh, in, in, in some games in that, in, in, in that promotion season. You know, I came into the team. Uh, he, uh, 
he was played out of position sometimes, really gave it his all, you know, and uh, and Giles again has been nothing but exemplary, you know, um, a real part of the team, team spirit, and always a smile on his face, works hard in the gym, uh, and again, somebody will get a good centre-half there who probably missed a bit of his development in England um, growing up in the States, a uh, different sort of development, um, but I think uh, I think he can do a job, yeah, and, uh, and I'm sure that somebody will will turn up um, with this, uh, this some big American boy who can uh, who can defend. So, no, again, both of them. Thank you so much for their efforts. They've been they've been fantastic for me, and uh, and yeah, nothing but but proud of these boys. Alex Patterson was the first signing of the promotion winning year. I think it was actually five hundred club money from the fans that helped contribute <laughs> to that before the Cougs arrived. Uh, and Andrew and Georgia as well, one of the first development squad players to come through the door. Uh, also, both leaving the club this summer. Yeah, Andrew, um, one of the B team players. You know, he's came in and he, again played his part. You know, people like Anis stepping up, um, and a couple of them, uh, and uh, Andre Bailey obviously getting his international call up, and he's getting his international call ups. You know, they, these are magnificent moments for this club. You know, we, we can only dream of talking about them when I first took over. You know, and uh, and and that's uh, that's testament to, to everyone involved. So Sam, um, we got this batch of the young players in, uh, and the development squad. We're trying to maybe bill it as rather than a B team, but. Um, They've uh, they've all developed. They've all developed as people. Um, Andrew got an injury at the wrong time again, and, and really hasn't shown what he can do. And again, one like Cameron Yates, he's to go and play games somewhere. Um, so we feel that um, he will uh, he will flourish somewhere else. Um, and Alex, wow, yeah, first signing. You know, I remember remember looking at Alex uh, when he was at Yeovil um, on loan from Middlesbrough, um, and we. This is the days of, uh, of when we we had nothing, and we were told we had even less than nothing. You know, when the club was really in trouble, and uh, before Rob and Pete came in, Alex, we knew we would get for um, for a, a, a good price because he was had a contract at Middlesbrough, but only been on loan at, at Yeovil, and uh, and it was perfect. You know, he, he's this combative mid midfielder, one headers up and down, really, really good, um, and we, th you know, we thought we'd uh, we'd make him into this. Uh, and to this player, I actually think he could play fullback fantastically well as well. Um, and yeah, Alex progressed for me. Uh, came back in fantastic shape uh, after the lockdown. I remember coming in, and it was like, wow, he's he's been working hard and, and got his place on the bench and come on at Wembley. And you know? also moments that Alex won't forget here as well. Um, he's uh, I think he's just had a baby, so congratulations there, and uh, and that's brilliant for him. Uh, and I think being up north uh, is important to him as well now where he's from. Um, he's been through a, the, a lot, Alex, and uh, and I think uh, the move's right for him. It's, it's a fantastic move for him, actually. He's, he's going to go up there. I think he's going to be star at Harrogate Town. And, uh, and, yeah, he's got our blessings and our best wishes going up, and thank you for his efforts. Uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, it is, like I say, it's, it's a tough time of year, but um, people do move on, and, uh, and that's, uh, that's football. And there's one more to address, one that came out of the blue really, I think, for a lot of fans. Fred on your dimmer, who I think made the most appearances for his last season in the Championship, finished the season so strongly, yeah. obviously catching the eye of, of clubs higher up and, and he's made the move to Luton Town. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, um, I mean, I've had calls from people saying, well done with Fred, you know, to um, turn him into this Championship player. And it wasn't us, it was Fred himself. You know, he really, really flourished, maybe a little bit later than some people needs needs opportunity, needs a bit of belief and, and proved what he could do, you know, I think um, he's behind some good players at Millwall, um, he was three or four times we signed him, you know, which was brilliant and I remember him coming through here as a 17 year old, um, staying in West Wickham just around the corner and uh, in digs and then when he came back last time he was, he was buying his own places around, so I mean that, that kind of story for me is fantastic, you know, um, at this club we always know that that players do do uh, do move on and uh, and and it was tough, you know. The modern day contracts dictate sometimes what happens and uh, and and yeah. Fred moved to Luton. Uh, believe me, I, I'd love to have kept him, but um, that's uh, that's football. Uh, and uh, and I know that uh, Rob and Pete would have loved to have kept him as well. But um, it was uh, it was uh, the Championship club coming from his move was right for Fred. He wanted, you know, and uh, and I think that. All we can do is say thank you so much, Fred. Um, he's been absolutely brilliant for me. Really has, you know. We've had some moments. I've had some had to have a, some stern words with him, but we've always had a smile and a hug at the end of our conversations and chats. And um, again, we wouldn't have been in the championship if, if it wasn't for, you know, your old Sopsy Charles and your and your Dimmers without a shadow of a doubt. You know, getting that penalty at Wembley is one of my 
my abiding memories. Um, I felt like we'd done something wrong when we got promoted, but he was uh, he was brilliant that day, uh, and has been in this new sort of left wing back role that we had, we employed him in at the uh, at the end of the season. A very attacking left wing back, but um, real paid dividends, and uh, I, I I can't wait to see him keep progressing in his career, and I'll always be proud that um, we can play a part in his career. And you never know, maybe another part one there, but we'll we'll see. It's uh, it's, it's you know we've got to have pride for these boys moving on and moving up the uh, the football ladder. Yeah, that's seven names and have left the club, it leaves some gaps to be filled. How far along the track are you in terms of, of bringing players into the club? Um, yeah, we are uh, we are down the track. We're, we're, we're still with our championship um, ticked off in our CV. We still seem to be a reluctance uh, of some players to, to come to Wickham or to look at Wickham and is another club going to come out is another and and this time of year is always quite slow anyway you know I, I think uh, if if you look at some teams they'll be signing three or four now um, it's difficult do I sign three or four now who I know I could get but then there's some players that I think will be better for this club and are better players and they're just hanging on to see if there's anything else around and, and, and rightly so that's what you do um, but if I get these ones, I, I lose these ones, and they might come back at the end. It's it's a tough job, you know. It's uh, the loans won't happen till late in July anyway. They always they always happen quite late. Um, but believe me, if one comes available, we're going to go for it. We're working really hard behind the scenes um, on a couple of players, very hard, um, and something that this club has never done before uh, is uh, is almost what we're doing behind the scenes, which I, which I will. I won't say, but people will obviously be able to guess. Not not under my tenor, anyway. So, it's um, it's not the freeze and the and the ones who weren't told they're good enough anymore. We're actually going for these players who maybe have, have either contracts or are wanted by other clubs, and Wickham becomes an option for them. But um, but there still is that that Wickham tag. You know, we are still this this team when you've got the the sides in League One and and the sides in the Championship. They're they're both both huge leagues and uh, and. People have got dreams. Uh, sometimes they have to accept, you know, a dream is to play for Wickham Wanderers and move on from there. And uh, and I'm hoping we can get the uh, the targets in. I don't need many. I think I've got about 16, 15 under contract going into the uh, new season. There's the new squad cap rules which have come in, which is going to affect how many players teams can have. So I think there'll be a few available. Um, same old story every year to the fans. Don't don't panic too much. You know, it's uh, it's very early days and. Uh, and if historically, I think we've signed some of our best players on the last day of the window or the last week of the window. Um, it's going to be no different this year. We uh, we really want to do the best for this club. I cannot wait to get going again. I could start the season tomorrow for the first time in a long time with a team that I would put out and I know would be comfortable. But I want to add some real quality to that team and uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing what we can do in the summer. Yeah, as you said, there's a long way still to go and, and your answer to this might change once you've seen what the squad looks like on day one. But where, where would you set the expectation level now for next season in League One? There are still some massive clubs at that level. Some fans might think we you know, automatically have this divine right to finish in the top two and come straight back. But I suppose feet on the ground time, isn't it? Yeah, of course. You know, um, we, We're going into the league that we've been trying to get in for 20 years. <laughs> it's brilliant, you know. So, uh, But we're falling into it, not actually going up into it. Um, it's uh, it's brilliant, brilliant to know that some people are talking about Wickham Wanderers as a top end League One side championship. Job done for me because that is what I see this club as. This is where I want this club to be. Uh, Rob's investing money in the training ground, looking at new venues for us. Um, the stadium is going to be super, super modern with the technology we're going to have in there, and uh, and the squad's going to be better, the best squad we've had for a while, for, for forever, for for my tenor here, definitely. So it's going to be uh, tough in League One without a shadow of doubt. Everyone's going to want to pop at Wickham Wanderers who came from the Championship, and you have your likes of. Your Sunderland, your Portsmouth, your Ipswich, who are going to spend bundles of money. There's already rumours of that. These Championship centre backs going for thousands and thousands of pounds a week. Good, you go and, go and do that. Let me do it my way, and I'll be really happy uh, to, to come up against you because I know what we do here. I know what we can achieve here, and I'm really looking forward to next season. Need a little bit of a break, um, so I'm going up to sunny Blackburn soon. Uh, and uh, but uh, it's uh, it's going to be a uh, a real enjoyable season next year mainly because the fans are coming back I can't wait to welcome them all back on that first day 
fingers crossed um, with everything, you know, and, and, uh, and my trip included with all the COVID stuff, fingers crossed that everything's safe and everything's able to be done. But once those fans walk through that door on that first day, that first league game of the season, I want that place rocking. I want, us to, I want us to get back to where we are this season. I want to deliver championship football again to all these people who supported me through Leagues 2, Leagues 1, almost the non-leagues, but we eventually got there and you couldn't come. I want them to come in. I want to see that championship football again. I want to see Wickham in that league, on that TV, on that first league, what, what pops up. All these things. Um, don't worry, I'm, I'm going to work so hard to make this happen. We've got a great staff, got a great squad, and more importantly, great fans. Can't wait to see you back. Enjoy your summer, but um, get those voices ready for next season.